Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing if it's possible to get two magnets to orbit each other. In order to get one object to orbit another one, you have to have two forces at play. One of them needs to be an attractive force, so you need something that's going to attract these two balls together. And then you also need something that's going to repel them, something that's pulling them apart. And those have to perfectly balance out so that they keep each other at bay and so it can't move closer or further away. It stays at the same distance from it. So the way things work out in space where gravity is the dominating force, gravity is the main force that attracts things together. So what's the force that repels it? Well, that's a centrifugal force. So the centrifugal force comes from something spinning around in a circle. If you spin around in a circle, your arms fly out. So the balancing act that keeps things in orbit is there has to be an attractive force and the thing that's orbiting around it has to be going fast enough so that the centrifugal force is pulling it away as it's being attracted towards the center. And if you use gravity, this works with any object with mass. For example, if I were far out in space and I took a bowling ball and then I shot a golf ball at the bowling ball, I could get the golf ball to orbit the bowling ball. But you have to shoot it at the right speed. If you shoot it too fast, then it has too much angular momentum and the centrifugal force is too high, so it'll just go flying off into space. If you shoot it too slow, then the attractive force is stronger than the centrifugal force, so it'll just fall into the bowling ball. But if you shoot it at just the right speed, then it will orbit around the bowling ball. Also, because it's a bowling ball that hardly has any gravity, we have to launch the golf ball at an extremely low velocity. You can see it's only at 0 0.0000180 meters per second. I've just sped up the time so that you can see it go fast. With a force like gravity, it's actually not hard to get things to orbit each other. For example, if I just start out with a bunch of golf balls randomly oriented in space, and let's say these golf balls, when they hit each other, they stick together. If I just let them fall in towards each other, they'll eventually end up in some system that's orbiting each other. So you can see eventually these golf balls start coalescing together and we get one big golf ball and eventually we get some smaller golf balls orbiting around the larger one. And this is actually a stable orbit that stays there indefinitely. If I speed up the time, you can see that it stays there. But the question is, what about other forces besides gravity? What about magnets? Have you ever wondered if you took one spherical magnet and another spherical magnet and threw them towards each other, could you get them to orbit around each other? As long as there was no friction, let's say we were out in space, could they just orbit around each other indefinitely? Well, first, since we can't go out to space to do this, let's just try this on a very low friction surface and see that if I throw one magnet towards the other, I can kind of get them to spin around and orbit each other. Let's try it out and see what happens. Okay, let's see if I can get this to work. I'm just gonna set one here, and then I'm gonna throw the other one at it and see if it has enough centrifugal force as it goes by that they'll just kind of orbit around each other. Whoa. Whoa. Look at that spin. Holy cow. <laughs> As this ball came at it and came closer, it kept its angular momentum so the whole system had to spin in a circle like this. And it was spinning extremely fast, you could hear it. But that's not really defined as orbiting. In order to orbit, they'd have to stay apart from each other and kind of move around each other like this. So what they really did was come together and then spin really fast in a circle. So by throwing two magnets at each other, I wasn't able to get them to orbit each other. Now the reason this isn't working is because magnets are a dipole, as opposed to a gravitational field, like a gravitational body, which is a monopole, which means that the field extends out in all directions equally. But for a dipole like magnets, the magnetic field looks like this. So if you try to orbit around it, you can see that you're passing through different strengths of magnetic fields pointing in different directions. So the magnetic field changes depending on where you are around it. But if we do this a little smarter, we might be able to get some type of orbiting effect with magnets. First of all, instead of having two bodies that are about the same size, we're gonna have one more massive body and then another smaller thing orbiting around it and we're gonna stay in the region of the magnetic field which is similar. For example, the magnetic field of these cylindrical magnets is gonna look like this. So it's gonna come up from top and go around the bottom. But if you'll notice that right around the center, it's actually pretty consistent. So if we can get something to orbit right around the center of the cylinder here, 
it should be able to stay in the same range of magnetic field so it's not changing as it goes around it. What I have here is a magnet on a thin rod and I'm gonna start it off with some velocity around it. So I'm gonna move it around in a circle like this and let's see if I stop moving it, if it will continue to orbit around it. So you can see that when it's pointed in this direction, it's attracted to it. So this is an attractive force. So now let's try to wiggle it around it and now I'll stop wiggling. Whoa, it actually orbited around it. You're probably thinking that this is the same motion it would have if I just wiggled a rod with a weight on the end of it normally. But actually, you can kind of see the, how it gains some momentum as it comes closer to the magnet and spins around as if it's starting to enter into an orbit. This is actually a pretty cool setup. If you manipulate it just right, you can actually get a magnet that semi-orbits around a center magnetic mass. No matter how good I get it started orbiting around, it always seems to spiral towards the center. There's two main reasons that this could be happening. The first reason is, is that because the rod that it's on is bending around, that takes some energy, and so there's continually energy lost from the system. So it starts out further away and it loses more and more energy and spirals towards the center. But what if we had a completely frictionless rod? Would it still be able to orbit around and never stop? Well, the answer is still probably no. The reason is because, let's take for example gravity, which we know can produce stable orbits. We know that the gravitational field scales by one over r squared. So the strength of the gravitational field drops off by the squared value the further you are away from it. This is actually the same for the electric field as well. In the Bohr's model of the atom, you have electrons orbiting around a positive nucleus. Now, it doesn't actually look like this for electrons and protons because electrons are so small, so you can't actually define their position and velocity at the same time. So it, you have to describe more of a wave function for them. But even in a wave form, the electrons still have an orbital momentum around the center of the nucleus. So we know that the electric force can cause things to orbit around each other, the gravitational force can cause things to orbit around each other, and a similarity between these two forces is that they both scale by 1 over r squared. It turns out if you deviate from 1 over r squared just a little bit, it changes the stability of the orbits a lot. For example, in this graphic, the black ball has a force that scales by 1 over r squared, the purple one is 1 over r to the 1.9, and the orange one is 1 over r to the 2.1. So a force that scales by 1 over r squared can produce stable closed orbits. By stable, it means that they'll stay in orbit forever, and closed means that they stay in the same path. But the problem is, for forces that scale by 1 over r cubed, like the magnetic force, you can't produce a stable orbit. So the answer is no, you can't get magnets to stably orbit around each other, even if you were out in space. Because they're dipoles and because the magnetic field drops off by 1 over r cubed. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And also hit the bell to be notified when I release my latest video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.